My Gavan and Melanine, and well met indeed. I am Arik here, Gala Jonathan, the head of the modding team behind Divide and Conquer, and welcome back to Divide and Conquer with our brand new version 2 campaign, The Easterlings of Rune. Ah, oh, The Easterlings of Rune, this one's been a long time coming. As usual, I've started at this screen here. So, you, if you wish to, have a little read of the information here, which is now all I think think updated? Yeah, I'm pretty sure I updated that. Haha, <laughs> I'm on point. So it should say about only having one region and something, and it's Lokan Rukar now, no longer Borthand. Um, this is the nice little stylized image we have in the bottom right now, and as you can see, the map has been updated to reflect the starting locations if a human person plays as that nation. Uh, and so that is what you can see me flicking through there. You get all the different updated maps. It also now highlights the regions you get rather than just the area you start in, which is uh, a nice little addition. Right, no further ado, straight to it, shall we say. Now, I don't have to skip any videos because I've already got it set to skip all videos. So as proof was me talking over that little change. Now, something I do need to say straight away, the canned script is very much work in progress and at the point that I set this build up, the canned script is currently set to trigger at turn 6 in an attempt for testing. So, first of all, you're going to get a little bit of a snapshot of what the canned script actually is going to do, although I'm not going to speak much about it at all. Um, but also, it's going to heavily vary the game because one of two things is going to happen and it's going to happen almost straight away at turn 6. So it's going to be slightly different to when you get your hands on version 2 because the, the, the event that happens with Canned at turn 6 in this version, for all of you people, it will be turn, I think we've, I think we've, I can't remember, 60 plus, somewhere up there. So if you want to have a little read of that, there might be the odd spelling error. Uh, but there's the top bit, next bit, there's the next bit, there's the next bit, and there's the final bit. <clears throat> the Golden Dragon Takes Flight. Military Report. So this video also coincides with a few little announcements before I dive right in. First and foremost, a ongoing progressive changelog series of videos is being created by Melville and Weir Callan. And you can see the first one with the release of this new campaign. So in the description below, you will find a link to Melvillain's video, which is a the first half of a, well, the first of many of a series of changelog videos related to version 2. And that is in the description. Now, additionally, call me absolutely stupid for this Brassadas when the time comes, but I'm going to also promote our Discord chat channel in this episode, as it's likely to get a large amount of views. We use the Discord chat to play various different games, all the different games under the sun. If you're interested in playing games full stop, you can join us in Discord. And uh, we play most key games are Age of Empires, Paradox games. Um, some people play multiplayer, DAC and Third Age and Guild Wars 2 with emphasis on the last one. So Discord is in the channel down below. You can join and come and say hello. So, with the gump out of the way, let's dive into our runic campaign. Now, there are lots of different, obviously, modding-related changes, and they will all come up as we go through. But first and foremost, clearly, as you can see, we start with only one town and a small gathering army. Now, what do we want to get first? Communal farming, I think, possibly? Maybe mines? Do we get mines? No, we don't get mines. We also start with virtually no money, as you can see. A huge prohibitive factor in the Runic campaign is you're not wealthy at game start. Um, you should note as well that some buildings have had their image changed. Which one am I thinking of here? Ah, uh, no, not the Merchant's Guild. Dragon's Wrath Guild looks, does look rather Western. Ah, but screw it, it fits nicely. In my opinion. Right, so I think we're going to want to go with farms, to be honest, rather than military. Oh. Oh, don't tell me I've written over my own change. Yeah, I bloody well have. Bum, 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 bum. Bear with me. Ah, oh, there we are. Probably jumped a little bit there, didn't it? But, right. So let's build communal farming. Let's go for that. Um, I was just changing these um, to Daratai, and the reason I was doing that is because I'd already done that. So it either been written over, or I'd foolishly not copied it across. But I did it weeks ago, after the Rune episode, the Rune overview, actually. 
Um, so these are meant to be Daratai clansmen and Daratai hunters to go with the Daratai warriors. They're all the same name. So what I think we want to do is bolster our army. Can we only get one free upkeep in our capital city? Are you joshing me? One free upkeep. Bloody madness, sirs. Madness. Anywho. Um, we don't need to hold a particularly strong garrison there. Now, what I want first of all is I want the Aryalad before I go for the Balkoth. Um, so I'm going to go east. Although we've probably got enough in the armies to go south and east. Uh, so... Um, I'll tell you what, you just train a unit of them for now. We'll take the lot. I'll take the lot. By your will, set watch patrol. You guys go up there, we and Margos, here. you go for the here. steps of the Wayne Riders, and find the town that's down there somewhere. As you will. Follow the roads. The sun sets on today's journey. We rest here until dawn. Mistrand. Our capital city. Yeah, and I think that's it. So here we go, everyone. Time already. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Eight. Yes! We're going to have fast turn times. This is why we cannot edit anything. So aside from that quick text unit entry editing, which shouldn't really matter, um, you should try and not edit anything in your build um, so that it stays safe and secure and doesn't crash. If the enemy approach, oh, well, that was useful, Sauron. Thank you very much for that. We shall end this day as Our Lokan Rukar continues suffer. heading north to Elkar. Now, what you will no find when you reach these towns is that they are garrisoned predominantly by the unit the that you unlock when you I take them. them kneel you. So, Candish units in the southern Mataram settlement. Orders. Now, we are, of we course, already losing day. money. A big part of the campaign, and in an attempt to make it a little harder, is that at the start, you do not make money very swiftly. Very, in great numbers. There are a hell of a lot of modding changes, of course, with this Runic campaign, and I don't really want to go over each and every single one of them. But um, the runic overview from a few weeks ago covers most of it, and I will include that in the little end screens bit at the end, although uh, the video will upload while I'm asleep, actually, so unlikely to include that until I get to work tomorrow and can edit it. Um, we're, right, we're losing the money. We're down to three turns there. Do we want to wait three turns? Four turns? We will be heavily in debt by the time we arrive at our destination. <laughs> I see high tax, very high tax rate brings in 1,199. And low tax rate brings in 746. So there's a difference of about 400 coins. It's just not going to make any difference really, is it? And the town's not going to grow. See, because this is only a city, it does have one tier more to go. It does require a Mason's Guild House though, and a Mason's Hall is there. So I'm playing on version 2 for the first time. Our enemies will suffer. None of them shall escape um, us. Who have we to got? Arielad and Arielad. Now we got a couple of units of archers. To take the walls now. Yes. Let's do it. We yeah, let's do it. Your enemies shall Captain Kathir. Um, what do I call this one? One space rune comma battle. Save game. To war, man. Or slowly. I uh, care the, not. The Just Bree campaign. Kill will also come in this build, but it will be some time, because of course Gondor is going to finish first. Do let me know if you feel any of the sound levels are particularly up and down, but do note that the music volume is about twice as quiet on the battle map as it is on the campaign map. So it's very difficult to make it so that you can actually hear it in battles and not hear it too much in on the campaign. Uh, so it's a right ball wake. Also, I was talking recently about RK joining the modding team. And this is true, he has joined the modding team. And what RK has brought to the modding team is the ability to create custom battle maps. Um, and he has created an Anuminas, a Fornost, and the Barrow Downs, a unique battle map that will pop up every now and then in the Barrow Down areas. However, none of those are in this version of the game. So when Bree campaign kicks off, you're not going to get his new unique Fornost. Right, we want to try and kill them with arrows fire as much as we can because these guys are armor piercing. This is why I've come for them first. If you're wondering what I'm talking about, the rune army is now restricted by region. And if you have a certain region, you can train a unit from then on out. In any region. Oh, balls. 
Yeah, open that one. Oh, well, this is annoying. Get Rukar up there immediately. What am I worried about holding, keeping this army alive for? We're literally on the second turn. <laughs> Just get them all involved. Uh, you may note that the Dragon's Wrath Guildsmen no longer chant. And this is because, um, unfortunately, whilst it's a really cool ability for the units to use, the AI would use it rather than send the unit into battle. So you would often have your best unit standing at the back of your army, screaming to the heavens, doing sod all while everyone around them dies. Because yes, whilst having a good morale means you won't run away, it doesn't actually make you any better at combat effectiveness or any appreciable difference to combat effectiveness. So... Uh, ah, we're in. Put that down, son. Get in there. No, I'm double tapping. I'm double tapping. Run. Victory is well within our grasp. Look how cool they look. Look, Scion Rim. Oh, we'll surely see this. And Glorious. Dragon's Wrath Guildman. They do actually have slightly different looks, as you'll note. The Dragon's Wrath Guildman have more of an armor plate kind of thing. And the Scion Rim have a circular chest piece. So there is a bit of a difference to them. The enemy's general lies dead. Now his men can sense their doom upon them. Now rush in. The enemy have lost the walls. Send your troops to take the rest of the settlement. Dragon Riders coming around the flank. What are we on? 32%. Oh, it's a nice square bar, isn't it? That's good. Now, we are just cautious because, of course, the Ariolad units are armor-piercing and our leader is easily brought down with armor-piercing. So let's hope he's not in there, in the, me in the melee somewhere. Ah, we've got routing, though. Oh, they've properly bloody. broken, haven't they? They have lost half their men. Um, is anything actually still fighting? Our archers are getting some kills in now, which is nice. Because, of course, the Ariolad units don't have any shields. So arrows are always better against a unit with no shields. Right, our Daratai warriors will go in first. Oh, no, they won't. No, they won't. we got the time. Bring up the archers. Keep it at time six as our army moves into position. Move into the city. Kill all in your bar. Archers! Halt! Keep shooting them. Lure them out. There we are. You get any more shots off, lads? Trying to minimise casualties, of course. Send Rukar in. What does this one do? Ooh. We'll find out soon enough. I'm surprised how easily these broke. I thought they were an awful lot stronger than Victory that. Victory is well within our grasp. In time, our foe will surely see this and lose heart. I mean, even the Daratai's are bringing them down. I mean, you guys aren't armor-piercing, are you? Uh, I was looking through the suggestions of how to make the rebels active, and one of the suggestions that I'm actually quite in favour of, to be honest, is to make one use of our new unit slots. It's a big undertaking, but I think it's a good idea, and it would be to make one of the new faction slots, sorry, be a faction called bandits for example and keep the rebels as the rebels and the rebels would go would then own no cities because the rebel faction can't actually be ever destroyed that's the that's the very purpose of them they can have no cities and the game doesn't mind although they'd always have the northern city anyway so the rebels would own no cities they would just have armies and when an enemy when a nation goes rebel its its troops and its forces would turn over to this rebel faction but, um, of course, I can't turn the rebels on because then they act as one global faction and it means they pull all their garrisons out of all of their towns and they're just rubbish. 
um, they'd be really easily defeated because they would just not defend certain towns and it would totally remove that like there are certain towns in the game where we've given them huge garrisons in order to make the AI go certain ways and so the way to get around this is to have one rebel faction that looks exactly the same as the current rebel faction but one's called bandits and one's called rebels and the bandits would be a normal faction that is just set to um, not play the game, basically, because you can turn a faction to have, like, no command, so that they just do nothing. They literally just defend their own lands, which is what the rebels currently do. So you'd have this bandit faction who would own all the settlements. Come, let us drink of the most rare and glorious fruit. So you'd have the bandit faction which would own every rebel settlement at the beginning of the game, but they would be turned off. They would never do anything. And then the rebels would be turned on. So every army that starts dotted around the world that isn't um, in a city, they would be able to move around and attack things and do things. And when a nation goes rebel, its, uh, it's remnants would then fight on as if they were a nation. We should um, and I'm very, mercy. very keen they would to utilize this and, and look into this as a, as a potential for us. I think it would be a really, really good thing to bring. Oh, we need to remove that from him, don't we? <laughs> uh, so that's what I'm, I'm currently thinking of, and I'm, I'm quite in favor of it, to be honest. Right, our money is already dropping wonderfully. Uh, I mean, our money is already... Looking up, we've got to go another course. turn at least there. Right, you head out to Lest and Strondos. There are certain changes I've spoken of that have not yet been implemented. For example, this river does not yet go all the way up. That's why version 2 is very much a work in progress, of course. We've taken our first town. Yes. Um, and what we will do, actually, is leave a unit of the clansmen, or merge with them. Serve? Leave them. We march. Our enemies will suffer. And move straight out for Rubar. This great army will be unstoppable. Let's just move on. Keep going. Keep the pressure up. What we also want to then do is build as many ports as possible. They are a way to money, as I have learned. I'm still probably not going to go heavily for um, garrison commanders. I'm not really down with that. I'm not bothered with that. If I've got an abundance of generals, I might start leaving generals in certain towns. It depends. We shall see as we go on. AI can stays loyal. Turn four for the test. Very, very well. Uh, Tigzik, yeah, go on then. We'll take the guy from um, Narnia. War declared, Isengard and Rohan. No surprises there. Temujin and Tigkiz. Wow, she has one thing on her mind with that face, doesn't she? Let's be honest. I don't want to group her in and uh, label her, but there's only one thing she's thinking of there. Or two things, I suppose. One of them probably involves a knife. The other might involve a knife. Depends what you're into. Order. Right, will. you go to the fort. Sorry if you can't hear me sipping, but it's a requirement that I drink as I do these because otherwise I cough like a madman. Yes. So you have to put up with the noise of we my move. dabbling None a little of bit of... Shall escape of uh, well, this is fake Coca-Cola, but... Sieging the walls. Let me take this place for you. I might siege them out because all four of those units fire arrows and I'm really not down for just chasing archers around the map. And we're not losing that much money, so what I am going to do, though, is as soon as we have got money, I will be queuing up farms and whatnot. The Tent of the Khan for us now gives a public order bonus to law, retraining bonus is down, a morale bonus to troops trained here, and building costs, that one's not actually true, I haven't edited it. Uh, so my that's not legit at the moment, I'm afraid. End the turn again. Right, you're about to see the can script play out then, but you're about to see it with no work done to it other than Racer has created the script. And touch wood, nothing will go wrong. There was an initial bug and we all had a bit of a crash, but he fixed that straight away. And Kanta arrives. Bride presented Khan Margos. Shanaz. Yeah, go on then. The ring, ring has been located. Uh, the ring has been brought forward... And that is something that's going to stay, because the ring will only cycle eight times. It will only jump to eight different settlements, and on the eighth settlement, it will then just go back to Sauron and he will spawn. Then if he were to die, the ring then just goes. It doesn't start again. So, and um, you might want to, like, eight, it jumps every 25 turns. So it will go to a town, it will stay there for 25 turns, and then it will move on. 
So, obviously, 8, that's 200 turns. So, by the ring appearing at, like, turn 40, that's just pushing it way back. So, we wanted to speed up that little, that bit. And also, it's a major part of bringing down Mordor. So, if you want to go for it as fast as possible. The Blue Wizard's Attack. And the Khan of Kand is dead. But Uldor and Sarah have just gotten engaged and have become married. How delightful. Let's have a little look at our family tree then. Ah, that was the other question. Yes, Rune now have a family tree, of course, because we are now the Daratai clan. And we are led by Luk Khan Rukar and his son Khan Margoz. Uh, additionally, we also have the daughter Tikkiz, who's already gotten married, and we've just given birth to Calf. And Uldor is also... Uh, he's just come of age, actually. So that's he might as well have just started the game as a general, might he? I mean, that was Orders. he came of age immediately. How much are we losing money? About five hundred. There's only one turn till Mataram goes down though, and then we will definitely be making money. And we can oh, we what might as well just siege Rubar out, might we? It's only two turns away, and the turns are going by very quickly, as you can see. Uh, so the Blue Wizard script, as you've guessed there, the it, it's canned. The blue wizards are involved, they will give you an option, you'll get a warning of some things that are going to happen. You then have to make a choice, and your choice will either turn you against Sauron, or your choice will turn you, will keep you as you are. Now if you stay as you are, you then have to actually deal with the blue wizards. Um, now I didn't want to give too much of the blue wizard script away, but the messages we you've already seen already do. Day, For the AI now, that's the end of the blue wizard script, so now... Um, Khan's capital has fallen to a massive army brought from the east by the Blue Wizards. And Khan will now have to spend some time getting their army, uh, getting their capital city back. Now what we also want to do here to shut down their archers is get everyone involved as fast as possible. Now Khan Margoz, I believe, has, yeah, Loknarim. So we've got some good archers of our own to fire back at the enemy. Move into positions, and you guys just run at them. Just run straight at them. Shut down their arrow fire. Our four oh, fights with raining. horns made of clay. We are winning the battle. There we are. We're in. I quite like the look of, Ro of Rune. Sorry, they're another one that the Third Age team put good, real effort into. Or well, not effort. That's over the top. But they have a crisp and professional look to them, and I think it. I think they look really good. Also, these Candice units aren't that good once they get into melee and they're getting slaughtered. <laughs> uh, so, to then just deal totally with the Candice script then, I will tell you what it does because there's no way around it. So, you play as Cand, at a certain point you get a warning message that the Blue Wizards are coming from the east. They've already convinced quite a large chunk of your own people to turn against Sauron and not join him. And you will have to decide whether you're going to join them as well. Enemy are badly now, I will bloody. leave certain bits they of this out, so you'll have to guess men. some bits. And if I don't mention anything here, and you know what that thing is, say you're a better tester, or you, somehow I've let it slip somewhere else, and don't tell anyone. Do keep it a nice little secret. So the Blue Wizards are coming with an army. They will come with a, and with a tribe that you've never that you know of, but you've never fought against or with. And you will have to decide whether or not you're going to join with the Blue Wizards, whether you think their army that they're bringing and the, the threat they pose is bigger than Sauron, or if they can promise you more wealth than Sauron. Or you have to decide whether you're going to stay loyal to Sauron. Um, now, if you stay loyal to Sauron, then that's, that's good, and Sauron will send a Dark Numenorian to you. You will then also get contingents of Dark Numenorians available to you as canned, thus providing you with very reliable ground troops. Um, so you get a small battalion of Dark Numenorians and you get a Dark Numenorian general. That's an interesting little torture center. Behold uh, our worthless foe. See how that general turns tail and flees like a whipped dog. However, you will have to fight against the Blue Wizards. So the army that you were warned that was coming will then continue to come and you have to then fend it off. Um, so a large, and I mean a large army, will then spawn and you'll have to deal with it. Like Great victories Minus are like sweet nectar. Dragon's Wrath again. Come, let us... However, if you then choose to ally with the Blue Wizards, 
You then turn against Sauron, Rune, and Harad. But not only that, but a l most of your population who would rather fight with Sauron abandon you. And you get into a terribly sticky situation whereby you now are surrounded by enemies on all fronts. And what may have been a large empire is basically whittled down to you being a horde nation. And then you have to seek out and reclaim. However, it does automatically ally you with Gondor, Dol Amroth, and um, if they're still alive, Dale and Dorwinian. So you can then basically flee your heartlands with your allies and a large contingent of forces and go away. You will also then be able to train units that the Blue Wizards bring with them. Only in terribly small doses. And the tribe that they have allied with far to the east becomes available to you also. I'll say no more on those bits. Call so speculate who on, as you will, on what that actually entails. Yes. We I think I might need to make these garrisons light. larger, you know. It shouldn't be this easy. Right, I want everyone with communal farming. You've already got communal farming, so I want Mason's Hall to get those cheaper buildings. Elgar, you are already got communal farming lined up. Perfect. Um... There are other in there are other facets to each choice. So choosing Sauron will also unlock certain other bits and bobs. Choosing Blue Wizards will unlock other little bits and bobs. Of course, the Blue Wizards themselves will join you, and they, whilst just we being basically be unique generals, there's nothing mercy. really special about them. These and that's a nice little immersion uh, factor. I'm honored to serve. Ah, the Arielad bow before us. The Arielad have watched on as our banner encompasses all the lands around the Sea of Ruin, but with the taking of Elgar and Rubar, they have taken a side. Their armour gleams in the sun as their warriors march, a fine warlord of their kin leading them on. As he approaches the men of Ruin, he bows his horse's head and throws his sword at the feet of your warriors. The Arielad have joined you. Courtesy of Knight of the North, who wrote that description. Yes, noble master. Um, at once. Quite talented a penman, I would suggest he is. And outside of our capital, Kochu has arrived, and Kochu has Dragon Riders as his bodyguard, and he brings two units of Dragon Guard. And now the Dragon Guard and Dragon Riders are available if we have a barracks, which we only have here, and it will take one turn for them to actually appear as a trainable unit, because uh, that's how the game handles changes to the uh, spot descript barracks. So there you go, eight turns in and I've already got unlocked the first unit. However, there are five more units to unlock and various towns. So, I mean, you st the aim of this script isn't to make it so that it's like 80 turns before your full army arrives, but it is just basically to make it so that you can't just straight away go for Dorwinian. That is basically all this is. It is an attempt to slow your your attack on Dorwinian down and making you just take a little bit longer before you can outrun them so that when you actually arrive at Dorwinian, they are then able to put up a reasonable fight. That is the point of this By your will. Oh, he didn't attack us. Yes, we move. Now, what you will get to see in this sweet. version two, if we get to fight there, um, if there's any villages around here, I think one, I think the two villages up here, I made it. But in the Bree campaign, you should get to see it a bit more as we fight against Enidwyth and Dunland. But you'll get to see the new Wild Men battle maps, and they yes, are amazing. We will engage them honorably. Oh, and we're in Woodland Realm allies. Breeland and Dunland have declared a truce. This isn't good, Breeland. Orders. Uh, you might as well go into there. Now, we've taken the steps of the Wayne Riders. Now, I would like sight range. Um, so, Coach, orders, you can probably orders. move further than... No, Uldor's got the uh, beastie cavalry, hasn't he? Rest here until dawn. So, yeah, Uldor, orders. you go out and start building towers. And um, yeah, you might as well actually orders. go and join orders. him. Margos is going to need all the help he can get. I Take both of those if you've gone. Oh, we lose money orders. if we do that, though. That's a shame. How much do we cost? Dawn. Oh, yeah, we're reasonably expensive, aren't we? Oh, dear. Oh, I didn't know that. But then we'll take Winteria and Eor shortly. Will End the turn. I'm enjoying it. I'm run to have some really fun late game units as well, and I'm keen to. I'm looking forward to getting those. Oh, I tell you what's not going to have its new name then if all of those names were replaced. Oh, I, I changed the entire description though. That's going to be such a pain. Vale of Dorwinian. I don't even have a diplomat, do I? No. Can I train one? Probably. Look, there's a unit of them here. Let's My have a check, because that would be really annoying. 
unseen. Yeah, none of the descriptions have changed. Brilliant. So either my work has been written over or I didn't copy it. More likely the former, I'm afraid. Uh, this unit is no longer called Eastling War Chariots. I called it something else and I'll have to... My eyes I'll edit awesome. it after this because the name was... I really like the new name I gave it. So that'll be some one other little bit I'll edit because that's been written over, which is annoying. Anywho, turning back. We are not making any money, so we have to just Orders. wait it out. We mark. Yes, noble master. This will orders. Kochu's two turns away from helping Margos. Uldor arrives at As our border. We rest here he can't be able to tower yet because we haven't got any money. Orders. <laughs> so we just have to wait. Yes. Your enemies shall fall swiftly. Sieging the walls. I will make them kneel before you. I will make them kneel before you. Um, 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 yeah, that's all we've got for that, isn't it? Another in turn. Um, the next turn will likely... Oh, you got five more minutes from me, actually. Five more minutes. Now, what I'm going to also do this weekend is I'm going to do three instead of two rune videos so this weekend being the start of the rune campaign you're gonna get three of these um, and only one gondor and then when brie starts on the first weekend the first rotation of the brie campaigns you'll get three brie campaigns and only one rune one so we're taking away from gondor now to give to brie later Lyndon and angmar have taken peace we are still losing money of course we are orders we march orders as you will. We will take two more towns Rest soon. What's Winter and Yorga? Ah, we're down to just the basic fort units. They are no threat to us. Line up communal farming, because that's going to be the first thing I want from you all. And then we're Mason's Hall. Now, I know you shouldn't really line them up, but once we take those two towns and our armies get into the towns, and we take some forts and whatnot, we can then do a spur of building improvements. I'm really annoyed that my, my work has been written over, and I don't know if it has been written over. I don't want to cast aspersions. Um, I may have forgotten to copy it, and then I've written it over myself, which would be incredibly annoying if I have done that. Or I've edited the wrong file, but I don't think that I don't think I would have done that. But there isn't really a way to go back, which is annoying. But I can remember what Orders. I called them. We march. I will only just change Warming their name for now. Together. I won't change their description. I'll do that later. My ears I'll do that in the main build. That for now, I'll just call them what I actually called them. You can't even get free upkeep. Once you've built the Mason's Hall, though, we'll get the meeting hall. Which will give us free upkeep and dotted around. Ah, oh, we're not losing too much money. It's not too bad. Oh, Winterian Eor might rise up in the next end turn. And Enmahath is only two turns away. Uh, Enmahath, I don't think, will rise up because the garrison is tiny in comparison to the army we've got there now. So we should take two more regions pretty quickly. Oh, I didn't say what our victory conditions were either. Ah, oh, that's a pain. That is a pain. Oh, ah, oh, they are rising up. As expected, we'll rush these buggers down and that will conclude the first episode of our grand conquest. Oh, we have almost the same numbers. To battle! It matters not. The world of men will fall. Oh, pressing the wrong button. Uh... Again, just hit them as fast as we can to shut down their arrow fire. Our foe fights with horns made of clay. We are winning the battle. Four taxmen have been flanked there. We've got our Dragon's Wrath guildsmen plowing head on into the archers. Somewhere in this carnage is our general though and he should be in the middle of the screen somewhere there 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 there, there. the kind of off color one that one is the general the one that's still got the brown coloring rather than the red that looks scion rim up murdering what is it 35 percent plays three percent move the archers up so if anything does run away we can shoot it it's interesting that the sprite doesn't really pick the up their red cloaks, and it makes dead. them gold. 
Now his men can sense their doom upon them. Only half the enemy force remains. Oh, yeah. Let's pray they lose their will to fight. Our enemy fleet and 23 died. Both righteous and well deserved. Sion Rim took 169 down. Bloody marvelous. But that will conclude our first episode. I will do the last little bits or the end bits of the next turn so that we always end on an end turn. That's the best point ah, to save it, in my opinion. Enemy no mercy. I swore they would regret resisting us, and they do. <laughs> they talk so much more when you play as the evil men factions, don't they? They don't talk this much when you play as, um, well, any the everyone else I've played as, basically. Oh, no, I want... What do I want? This one. That's still called Milk or Shadow, at least. Trade increase. Lokar and Rukar is a promising commando. Damn right he is. And he brings us money. Money, 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 money. But we have no buildings here, so no training is currently available to us. You haven't even got land clearance. And then I will take a meeting hall. As you will note, a mason's hall is only available once you make it to a castle. And a master mason's hall is only available once you make it to a stronghold. Thus meaning a mason's guild house is unavailable in castles. That is not a bug. That is intended. So, I don't think we have anything more to do. We're waiting on the bits of money that are going to come through. Orders. We're getting our boundaries up. Get our towers up soon enough. Our enemies will suffer. How may I serve for a most honourable victory? Yes. Resting here. Why can't I construct a watchtower there? We own this place. Our enemies will suffer. No, we've already made it to Karasant. No which, interestingly, has a brand new battles campaign map model edited by Elite Dwarf only yesterday. This episode was recorded on the 18th of May 2017. So if you're commenting in nine months' time, probably a lot has changed. But for now, that will be all. So I do hope you've enjoyed this first foray. Things to check out. The link to Discord is in the description of this video. The link to Melvillain's changelog video is in the link of this video. And will be, hopefully, one of the videos at the end. And the Runic campaign, uh, the Runic clan faction overview will also be at the end screen. Um, probably two hours after the video goes up. Because that's how long it takes me to, from the video to go being live to getting to work. So that will be all. So I do hope you've enjoyed this. And until we speak again, dear friends, Devar Naden, Ferimad Melunin, and farewell.